Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topics are Libya, Syria, and insincere voting on the United Nations Security Council. Of course, Libya just got finished with a civil war, and during that civil war, there was a United Nations Security Council resolution which authorized an international intervention into Libya. In contrast, Syria still has a civil war ongoing, and there has not been, nor will there be, an international intervention or a Security Council resolution against Syria. So the question is, why do we see this difference, and how does this relate with insincere voting? And that leads us to a big question here, which is, why do states vote insincerely on the Security Council? Let's kick things off with a trivia question here. In discussing the current civil war in Syria, China often mentions the disastrous United Nations Security Council Resolution number 1973, which authorized military action against Libya. How did China vote on 1973? Did they vote yes, no, did they abstain, or was the Chinese ambassador hungover, got up late, and missed the vote due to New York City traffic? Remember, this Security Council resolution is voting for an inter intervention, so if you vote yes, that is saying we want an intervention to occur. So think about this for a moment and go ahead and post a comment with your expected answer into the comment section. And once you've done that, Let's try to reason through what the answer seemingly should be. Well, China doesn't like this resolution, and so it's pretty clear that they shouldn't be voting yes on it if they don't like it, so let's just cross out yes. Next, you should be able to reason that, well, China has veto power on the Security Council, so if they really don't like a resolution, they can vote no, and that ensures that the resolution will not pass, period. So if that's the case, it doesn't make sense for them to abstain theoretically, because they could just vote no and then ensure that they don't get this passed, as opposed to abstaining, which leaves it to the other guys to pass it on their own, which is a possibility. So you think that no is going to be better than abstain, which means abstention is not going to be the answer either. And then it's either going to be no or the Chinese ambassador was hungover. The Chinese ambassador was hungover is kind of silly, so I guess you would think that B must be the answer. The answer must be no to this question. And in fact, that's not the case. The correct answer is that China abstained on this. And I want to answer the question why that's the case. There are two possibilities. The first is that China just made a mistake. They didn't realize how bad that this resolution would end up being for them, and this would be turned into a big disaster in Libya and something that China really did not want. Well, that could be the case, but I think China knew what was going on there. And so it wasn't China just making a mistake, not understanding what was going to happen in Libya. Option two seems a little bit more plausible, which is that something more nefarious was going on. In this lecture, we're going to be uncovering what that nefarious thing was. Let's talk about insincere voting. United Nations Security Council members must consider the effects of a yes vote versus a no vote. They can't do this in a vacuum. They have to think about the consequences of their vote. And in fact, tacit approval of a resolution may be better than no resolution. So to abstain on a resolution, to essentially give it your tacit approval by refusing to veto that resolution, that might be better than vetoing the resolution and ensuring that no resolution occurs. Why is that the case? Well, let's talk about the benefits of a resolution. Having United Nations Security Council authorization leads to more inclusive alliances and cheaper costs to fight. The United Nations doesn't have a military force of its own. In order for the United Nations Security Council to actually execute resolutions, it has to rely on the military force of volunteer countries. And so if you're in the United States and you really want a resolution to go through because you're really pro whatever that resolution was, and in this case, an intervention into Libya, having the Security Council authorization allows you to diffuse the cost over many more alliance members, which is good for you because you're paying less to get something done. Now, there is a bit of a cost to this for the guys who really want the resolution to pass, like the United States in this case, and that's going to be a limit in the scope of what they can do. So by having more guys on the United States' alliance, that comes at the cost of the United States of having a not as deep scope of the mission. This is going to limit what they can do because they have to appease everyone on their alliance to keep the alliance going. And as a result, you can't do as much as you might want to do otherwise if you were alone and could choose exactly what was going to happen and not have to worry about any of these sorts of costs. So you're trading scope of what you do for cheaper costs of doing it.
And we're going to analyze how this interacts with voting on the Security Council. But before we can do that, we need to have a quick little definition here. An outside option is the best available plan of action if the primary option fails to work. So in the context of a Security Council resolution, my outside option is, as the United States, is what I would do if the Security Council resolution would not go through. Okay? Let's look at two different situations. Let's first look what happens when outside options are good for the United States. So the United States' preferences are on the left, China's preferences on the, are on the right. When the outside options are good for the United States, the United States most prefers having United Nations Security Council authorized action. This is going to be a cheaper operation, even if it is a little bit more limited. Now, because the outside options are good, the United States prefers unilateral action to no action. So because the outside options are good, I'm willing to pay the cost even if I have to do it alone. I would prefer that to having no action whatsoever. But it's still the case that I, as the United States, prefer Security Council authorization to no authorization. And on the other side, you have China, who doesn't want the United States to do anything at all. But also, China doesn't have to worry about the costs involved. So it's just worried about the outcome. It's the United States is going to be paying the costs. China's not going to be paying any of these costs. So China wants no action. And then next wants United Nations Security Council authorized action, because that's going to be limited in scope again. And then the last thing they want, the thing that they least want, is unilateral American action, because that's going to be really broad in scope, and that's going to be something that China's going to want to avoid. Now, let's work through the logic of this using a game tree. So China is going to start out by choosing whether to approve or veto. And depending upon China's action, the United States, if China approves, chooses whether to go with an authorized force or to commit no action. Or if China vetoes, the United States chooses to go alone or, again, to choose no action. Now, let's suppose that China vetoes and see what happens here. If China vetoes, does the United States go alone or take no action? Well, looking back to the United States' preferences here, the United States likes unilateral action over no action at all. This is because, again, that the outside options are good. So when the outside options are good, if China vetoes, the United States goes alone. In contrast, if China were to approve, the United States could go alone, or rather to go with the international force, or take no action. Obviously, the... First option, the best outcome for the United States is for the United Nations Security Council to authorize action and then take that action. So if that's the case, then if China approves, the United States goes with the security force of the international world. And so we can take that information and look now to see what China should do. What should China do here? Should China approve or veto? If China approves, the United States goes with the international force. If China vetoes, the United States goes alone. Well, looking at China's preferences, China prefers authorized action to unilateral action, which means China is going to approve, and then the United States is going to go ahead with the international task force. What this means is that China is going to be voting insincerely. China doesn't actually like the resolution, but vetoing the proposal causes the United States to take a more extreme action. And so tacit approval is better for China than allowing the United States to take that extreme action. Now we should look at this the other way around, where outside options are bad. So China's preferences are going to be the same. They want no action to limited action to broad action. And the United States still most wants United Nations Security Council authorized action, but we've now flipped two and three around for the United States. Now the middle option for the United States is no action, and the worst possible outcome for the United States is for the United States to take unilateral action. So let's see how this plays out now. This again, we've just reset that game tree, and we're going to start off on the right side. Suppose China vetoes. Does the United States go alone or take no action? Well, we flipped the outside option to being bad, and so the United States would take no action there. So if China vetoes, the United States takes no action. What if China approves? Well, going back to those preferences again, the United States prefers authorized action to no action. So if China approves authorized action, the United States is going to go ahead and lead that task force. So this means that when the outside options are bad, if China approves, the United States goes with the International Task Force. If China vetoes, then the United States takes no action at all. Well, China prefers no action to having the United Nations authorized actions. And so China optimally vetoes, and then the United States takes no action. So the lesson here is that outside options matter. When the United States' outside options are bad, China votes sincerely. But when they're good, China votes insincerely. And either way, that's what's actually optimal for China, regardless of what they're saying they prefer in the vote. 
Now, to tie this back to Libya and Syria, I'm going to give you the ridiculously simplified story of why we did intervene in Libya and why the United Nations Security Council took action in Libya, but that's not happening with Syria right now. Libya is a really big country, but most of it is a relevant desert. In contrast, while Syria is one-third the size, most of that is relevant land. So for the United States or NATO or anybody else to take an intervention into Syria, you got to cover actually a lot more ground than you would have to in Libya. It's going to be harder to do that. Second, Libya had clear cities to protect. There were rebel-controlled cities in Libya that the United States could actually reasonably protect, as well as you know the NATO task force could reasonably protect those cities. In contrast, in Syria, it's unclear what we were supposed to be protecting if we do intervene. Third, there's a clear successor, or there was a clear successor in Libya. There was a National Transition Council in Libya. We knew exactly who was going to be coming into power in Libya after the war was won and Gaddafi was gone. In Syria, that's not the case. We don't know who is going to be the successor in Syria. It's unclear to us, and that's going to be worse in expectation than it was in Libya when we knew who was going to be in charge. So all that's to say is that in Libya, the United States had a good outside option. And in Syria, the United States has a bad outside option. And so China does not veto the Security Council resolution in the case of Libya, and China does veto the Security Council resolution in the case of Syria. And so that's why we see the difference between what's going on in Libya or what went on in Libya and what's going on in Syria today. And that wraps up this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. And in the next lecture, we will continue looking at manipulation on the Security Council. Until I see you next time, take care. Bye now.